Welcome back. In this video, we will be looking at the output of the TX1 cell phone backup extraction and how we can analyze the results using the XLeap tools from Alexis Brigoni and also using other free Linux tools. The results we are using here are from a different video where we looked at the new feature of the Tableau TX1 forensic imager performing backups for iOS and Android cell phones. Let's start with an iOS backup and look at what we have. I'm going to CD to the backup folder. And then I'm going to do an LS to see what's here. And here is the iTunes backup, which contains a bunch of folders with two character names and then four information files. I mean, technically there's six files here, but these files here are basically all part of the same, same database. This is not helpful to me as I have no idea what any of these files are in terms of the type, right? Is this a JPEG file or is this a PDF or is this a database? And then if we look at the file names, they're all named this long alphanumeric string. So I have really no idea where these files come from in terms of what application they're associated with. We could take a look at the manifest.db file, but that takes a lot of manual work. So let's see if we can get some tools to make things easier. And so just to make sure our system is up to date, let's just go ahead and do an upgrade. So I'm going to do a sudo apt upgrade. And so this took a few minutes for me to, to perform, but I'm going to speed up the video. One way of looking at the iPhone data in an organized fashion is by using the iLeap tool. iLeap stands for iOS Logs, Events, and PList Parser. And it will take in as an input a compressed tar or zip file or the iTunes backup folder, which is what we have. So let's start by getting the code from GitHub. So I'm going to go ahead and CD into my downloads folder and then do a sudo git clone https colon slash slash github.com slash a brignoni slash iLeap. All right, so once it's done downloading, I can CD into the iLeap folder and then let's take a look at what we have with an ls command. So here's all the files for iLeap and one of them is this requirements.txt file. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I have installed all the requirements that iLeap needs. I'm going to do a pip3 install dash r requirements.txt. All right, so now that we're ready to run either the command line version or the GUI version. For this demo, I'm going to go ahead and just run the GUI. So I'm going to do python iLeap gui.py. So I will go ahead and do a browse folder and then select a folder that contains those folders with the two character names and those four special files. I'm also going to select the output folder to somewhere that I can write to. And then I'm going to go ahead and select the time zone. I'm in New York today, so let's select that as the time zone. And lastly, for the available modules, they are all selected by default, so I will just leave them all selected. It will take more time, but you're watching it via this special time warp, so it won't keep you waiting for long. See, it's already done. When iLeap is done, you will see a pop-up panel with a path to the HTML report. If you click OK, it will close iLeap and it should open the report. So now the browser opens up the report. In the details tab, we see that the tools can see the extraction type as iTunes backup. The other piece of interesting info is that the processing took about two minutes to complete, so it's pretty fast. And then let's hop over to the details tab. Here we can see the product type of iPhone 13,2, which is an iPhone 12. The name is iPhone-SK, which is the name that my friend Steve gave his iPhone. So thanks, Steve, for being my guinea pig. The version of iOS running on this phone is 17.1.1 um, with that particular build. And it lists out the serial number, the MEID, the IMEI, the ICCID, and his phone number. On the next page, we see some of the similar info repeated. I'm guessing that these are from different parts of the phone. The next tab is the script run log, which shows all the scripts that iLeap 
ran on the backup to obtain the artifacts on the left-hand side of the browser window. This is good to look through so that you can see why certain artifacts were not found. For example, the module photos db exif had errors, so this could be why no exif information was found. The last tab is the processed file list where it shows you the file where the module is obtaining the information from. With each new version of iOS, it is possible that Apple move the file of interest or change the format so that the module can no longer parse it. So again, it's always good to know what the tool is doing under the hood so that when you encounter errors, you can manually continue with the exam if you are really interested in that particular artifact. Now if we come over to the left-hand side and look at the individual reports, we see that there is actually quite a bit of info from an iTunes backup. We have the installed apps, and then it looks like Steve is spending time on his work phone looking up vacations and cruises. You can get address book contacts, bash history. Oh, look at this. He is typing Linux commands on his phone. What a nerd. Bluetooth info, CarPlay history, data usage, etc. Lastly, let's take a look at the recent web searches from Safari. Holy smokes, definitely not safe for work nor Blue Monkey videos. Anyways, you get the idea of what iLeap can get for you off an iTunes backup. Earlier when we were looking at the iLeap report for the scripts ran, we saw that there were some errors from processing the images. So what if I want to look at the pictures folder from the backup? The data extracted does show the pictures folder. So let's take a look at what's inside that folder. Let's cd into the photos folder and then subsequently the 100 apple. That's the only folder there. And then do an ls. Here we only see one file, but Steve told me that they had more photos on his phone. So let's take a look at the iOS backup another way. We can use the iDeviceUnback program, which will take the backup and reconstruct it into a file system representation that makes logical sense with appropriately named file folder structure. First, we have to grab it off GitHub. So I'm gonna go CD into my downloads folder and then git clone https colon slash slash github.com slash inflex slash iDevice unback dot git. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cd into iDevice unback and do an ls and take a look at what we have. So basically we have the code here, the .c files and the make files and so forth. So let's go ahead and just type make to create the executable. All right, once that's done, I'm gonna type sudo dot slash device unback dash v for verbose dash i to specify the input folder. And I'm gonna do tilde slash tx1 underscore image slash 2023 underscore 11, 22, 15, 34, 28 which is the timestamp of my image, slash image, slash, and then this long alphanumeric string. All right, then dash O for the output folder, and I'm gonna put it in tilde slash output slash unback. So when it gets, comes back, we can CD into the output folder of tilde slash output slash unback, and then do an LS. And here we can see the files and folders with their original names, right, as it stands on the iPhone. And I can go into the media folder and look at what's here. So I'm gonna do CD media slash DCIM slash 100 Apple and do an LS. So now we see a lot more files than what iLeap found. And so let's just take a look at one of these files. I'm gonna do EOM, which is the eye of mate, which is the image displaying software. I'm gonna take a look at uh, just this file over here, img underscore 0256.heic. All right, so we can basically see the contents of these files. Now I'm gonna go ahead and run a du command to see how much space the restore backup is taken up. So just du-csh of dot. And it's about 15 gigs, which is about the same size as of the iTunes backup. So yeah, it looks like it's about right. Okay, before moving on to doing Android backups, please click on the thumbs up icon to like this video. 
It costs you nothing, but helps me out a lot. While you're at it, please subscribe if you haven't already done so. One way of looking at the Android data is by using the Aleep tool. So let's go ahead and download the tool from GitHub. I'm going to cd into tld slash downloads, and then sudo git clone https colon slash slash github.com slash abregnoni slash aleep. Okay, and then I'm going to cd into the aleep folder and do an ls to see what's there. And so there's all the code along with the requirements.txt file. So once again, we want to make sure we have all those installed. So I'm going to go pip3 install dash r requirements.txt. And once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and launch a leap by typing python a leap gui.py. All right, now let's take a look at the Android ADB backup and what it looks like on the file system. So I'm going to go ahead and cd tilde slash tx1 underscore image slash 2023 underscore 11 blah blah blah. That's the date of when I did the extraction slash image. Let's take a look at what's in here by using ls dash lh. And we see that we only have one file, right? A one gig uh, file named image.ab. So what we have from the tx1 is the backup file in a dot ab format. But I'm not quite sure what that is, so let's take a look at this uh, file and see what the system says. So I'm going to run file image.ab. And it comes back and tells me that it is an Android backup, version 4, compressed, and not encrypted. All right, now, before we run Aleep, keep in mind that Aleep reads in formats of zip, tar, fs, and gz, or the directory of a full file system extraction. And unfortunately, the AB format is not accepted. So what we can do is convert the .ab format into one of the ones that uh, Aleep does read. Fortunately for us, because we're running on the Kane 13 distro, the tool Andriller is included. So let's go ahead and use that tool to convert the .ab file to a .tar file. So I'm going to go ahead and launch the Andriller tool. And once it's launched from the Tools menu, we can select Convert AB to TAR. And this does it pretty quickly. And now that we have a TAR file, we can go back to the Aleep program and then select this TAR file as the input. And I'm also going to select the Output folder. To and then once again, with all of the modules, they're selected by default. I'm going to go ahead and leave that be and see if it can run them all. And then hit the process button. And Aleep finishes actually really fast. And, uh, so that doesn't seem good. From here, it, it, we can see that the time it took to parse was zero. So something doesn't seem right. But it also looks like the parsers are running, but can't see any of the files. So I'm guessing that means that the Android backup uh, either isn't very useful, uh, it doesn't contain much information, or else the phone that I was using really doesn't have anything to back up. Uh, the, the file was only one gig in size, so you would think there's something there. Now let's see about using other tools to analyze an Android backup. First, we have to figure out how to extract the data from the image.ab file. Good thing is that we already used Angular to convert the .ab file into a tar format. So let's just use tar to extract out the archive. So I'm going to do tar-xvf image.ab.tar. And then do an ls-lh to see what we have. And we now have two new folders named apps and shared. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a du-csh of those two folders. And looking at the file sizes, they're pretty comparable to the .ab file. So it looks about right. So I'm not losing any data. All right, so now let's take a look at the folders that were extracted by tar. So I'm going to do an ls of the apps folder. So it gives us a whole bunch of the expected folders which are named for the individual apps. And if we drill down, I'm going to do ls-r of apps. 
we can see that there are certain setting files that are in the XML format, there are databases, there are manifest files and APK files and all kinds of stuff. So there's some, some stuff there. Now I'm gonna take a look at the other folder named shared. I'm gonna do LS dash capital R of shared. And there's really nothing here except for a bunch of audio files in the tape a talk records folder. So it looks like the Android backup doesn't really contain much stuff at all. I know that there were photos on the phone, so we should have seen data in the DCIM folder, but there's nothing there. Uh, I'm gonna have to do more testing if anyone is interested in the results. Leave a comment below to let me know. So as we talked about previously, phone backups don't provide nearly as much information as a physical extraction, but they still yield some information of value. Right. In this video, we looked at analyzing an iOS backup using iLeap and then saw quite a bit of useful things there. And then we tried using Aleap on an Android backup, but that didn't actually turn out so well, probably because the lack of artifacts on the Android phone itself. Uh, we used some Linux commands like iDeviceUnback and Androller to convert the backup files into other formats, which makes them easier for uh, manual analysis. And sometimes due to circumstances, phone backup files are the only things you can get, so make do with what you have. For more about using Linux for forensics, watch these videos here. Make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.